Hi, Sarah Salen in here with Remax Perry Sound Muskoka Realty Limited Brokerage. And uh, as promised, I'm coming to you now with the um, updates of what I've heard regarding the Georgian Bay water levels. Uh, it's not good news. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. Uh, we, all, we all hear and see what's going on. Uh, just to give you some stats, the major you don't really think of the impact when, until you start getting the numbers in and thinking about how many people and businesses are actually affected by this. Just going by some stats that we um, have heard uh, in all of Georgian Bay as a whole. Um, so each specific spot might be a little bit different where you are when you're seeing this. But 68 marinas are affected, 76 other businesses, um, whether that's resorts, any kind of rental places, canoe places, um, sailboat training, and then you've got government facilities, the Coast Guards, and all these other places that you don't even think about really. And the big one that really hit home for me, being in the real estate market, is that the cost to the uh, cottagers to fix their docks, to fix their water levels, just to get in to access some of these places, is upwards of $500 million. That's really where it kind of hits home to people when that's your personal uh, money, that's your dream, that's your cottage, that's where you spend your summers. And to be to, to now have that as a kind of a cost to you additionally on top of everything else that you go through on, you know, taxes and all these different things. Anyways, it's it's really it's really mind blowing actually, um, to see all these numbers and, and see the people talking about it and people getting together. At the Cottage Life show there was hundreds of people in the room. Uh today, uh uh, Tony Clement was there, uh, the m &R had a representative there, MPAC, talking about just the assessments on these properties and how that's going to be changing too. I just wanted to mention that what they did say that if you have a property where the water levels are now really affecting how you're actually being able to access your property, whether it's uh, by water, if you can't even get in, um, that's going to be something that you can really contact MPAC for. They just, uh, April 1st was a deadline to do a reassessment. However, they said you can do what's called a request for reconsideration on your assessment. They're going to try and come out to people. I know a lot of people, for example, you haven't been to your cottage yet because the season hasn't started for you. They will uh, come and reassess that and you're not going to be stuck to that assessment for four years. So as long as you contact your um, your facility there, your impact people and tell them your address and have them come out, they're, they're going to get to everybody is what they, that's what they've told us. Uh, the, I mean, there's talks about everything of what's happened. The St. Clair River, which runs between Huron and Lake Erie, uh, just by Sarnia, that was dredged out a while back and that's what a lot of people are thinking the cause is. However, you've got so many other things to think about, the climate, um, the St. Clair River, then there's all these other factors involved. And so what's happened is the government's been talking, uh, or we've been talking, I guess the Canadian side has been talking to the government. And now that Lake Michigan, which is the only one that, of the Great Lakes that is actually fully in the U.S., now that they're seeing a big issue with it, now it's kind of starting to come together. The two governments have come together and they're going to try and see what they can come up with. So yesterday, the International Joint Commission, if you've heard that, the IJC, um, they've actually received the recommendation, uh, or sorry, the government's received it from the IJC. And what they're doing is they're asking for a few things. They're asking um, for regulation for the outflow um, into through Sault Ste. Marie from Superior coming into Michigan and uh, Lake Michigan and Lake Huron, which Michigan Huron they classify as one Great Lake because they rise and fall equally uh, as opposed to the other the other Great Lakes. Um, they're all looking at investigating some structural options, uh, whether that's filling in uh, the St. Clair River, whether that's building breakwaters, adding things. I'm not really sure what exactly what that is. I guess we'll find out. Um, Hoping what that structural will do, though, they said we'll bring in 5 to 10 inches of water. So if that's something that's going to help, every inch counts. That was one thing that was brought up today at the meeting. Every inch counts. The Also, the um, cost benefits to doing this in the future as well. How they're going to actually just deal with it. This is going to happen. Water levels are going to go up and down. It's how they're going to be able to deal with it. And also work on the environmental studies. The one thing that you think about is trees that are going to be losing their water um, if, to, to grow and to build, uh, you know, bigger, 
bigger, stronger trees on your on your property. Uh, even bringing into the talking about the the wildlife, the loons that nest on there on the on the beach, and you know now they have to go further, further, further back and further out or whatever. Um, you know, so people are talking about building little nests in in their property for these loons to be able to live, and and so it's not going to detriment them. So I, you know, the thing is, we're understanding that it's going to be looked after. Tony Clement is going to Ottawa on Monday, and he's going to be speaking to the government about this and what uh, is going to be done. So he's going to be reporting back on anything that they come to as far as uh, what they're going to do to start fixing this problem and seeing if they can regulate anyway or add these structural um options or see how much they cost. I've heard of upwards of $500 million to fix this, uh, $20 million to just get started. Uh, Fednor was there today as a representative and they were saying even they have 40, if they had $40 billion, that wouldn't even be enough to, to even start fixing everything. Uh, what's, what's hurtful is that the dredging, that the um, costs to the marinas, to the businesses and everything, can anywhere, I mean the lowest is $30,000, and then I've seen things, estimates up to $650,000. So these are costs that, um, again, next week um, there's going to be a meeting to see if the government will allow for zero interest loans um, to get the money to be able to do this because you want to be able to just help out as much as possible. So there are some things in the works. Once we start knowing what the outcomes of these meetings are, I'll be able to report back a little bit. So, um, you know, we just have to keep rolling with it. We'll see what happens. You know, the spring has started. Uh, if we could just get all the water from Muskoka, all the floods, if we could just shift that over. That was a little bit of a joke this morning, um, talking about how uh, too bad that's not possible. Um, and then, you know, why isn't it? And anyway, so we do what we can. If you have a property that you uh, want us to come out and see and take a look at and give you some kind of estimate on how much your property value has changed because of that water, you can definitely give us a call here at Remax um, or call me directly. My number is 416 414 Four four eight seven. So again, um, if you need a longer dock, there you know you just go through your township, get the application, make sure you're doing it. Uh, if you need the, some dredging, you can also get that uh, application done. And you know, just be patient. There's a lot of people doing it, but there's ways to do it. So do it the right way. Um, and any more questions that I could hopefully answer, I should hopefully have more answers for you once the rest of the. Um, meetings from this week in Ottawa and that the two governments are working together. So hopefully Tony Clement representing our Perry Sound Muskoka uh, district here and he'll be able to give us some more answers next week. So thank you for your time. Sorry it was a little long-winded but um, the reality is what are we going to do to fix it? We'll do our best and we all just work together and keep being aware of everything and uh, that's it. Signing off from Perry Sound. Hope you guys have a really great weekend. The spring is coming so let's keep that as a positive in uh, in May of 2013.